Welcome everyone. Today I've got a new anime movie recap for you, Golden Boy. Whatever he does, he turns it into a masterpiece beyond human capability. For example, if he takes up a sport, he becomes a professional in just one week. And he won against a champion professional sports player. If he becomes a teacher and tutors a girl student, her parents are ready to agree to hand their daughter over to him within the same week. It's absolutely ridiculous and hilariously funny. I highly recommend watching the full movie. You won't regret it. I'm sure you already think this story sounds amazing. If you're ready for my recap, let's dive in together. The story follows Kentaro Oe, a 25-year-old freeder. Freeder means part-time workers, who travels across Japan on his bicycle, working various part-time jobs. Despite dropping out of Tokyo University before, he cycles on his bicycle, finding a part-time job and mumbling about what to learn next. Suddenly, a yellow car drives past him, almost hitting him and causing Kentaro to panic. He drops to the ground, rolling across the road and crashing into a pile of trash bin. After getting a nice fragrance from those trash, Kentaro notices a beautiful, wealthy woman named Madame President. She's driving a 1980 Ferrari and wearing a uniform of, I can't even explain this uniform. She removes her glasses and checks on Kentaro to see if he's okay. He, barely holding back his evil thoughts, manages to say, I'm perfectly fine. Amid the awkwardness, he starts cleaning up the mess he caused. Madame President, without hesitation, pulls out cash, over one million yen, equivalent to six grand, to cover the costs of cleaning the trash, his medical expenses, and his damaged bicycle. He can't accept such an amount of money, so Kentaro approaches her to return it. Instead, he gets a firm slap from Madam President before she drives away like a tornado. Kintaro wrote in his notebook as usual for study purposes. After the accident, he took his bike to a local mechanic. The bike mechanic didn't charge him for the small fix. This old man, with his kind heart, let Kintaro off free of charge. However, the mechanic's debt collectors came to demand their money. The old man didn't have enough to pay off his own debt. Kintaro understood the situation. He walked like a man sending chills down the debt collector's spines. He's about to beat down those debt collectors. Um, I can't explain this. Kintaro later wrote down his lesson about these two Yakuza. Next, the scene shows Kintaro arriving at his destination. He meets a staff member who guides him around the company. Her company develops software applications, for example, Chrome, Blender, Adobe Premiere Pro, and so on. After the tour and a short walk, Kintaro introduces himself to the CEO, Madame President. He did not expect to meet her again and started chuckling as the awkwardness grew. Madame President assigned him to clean the toilet, not what he had expected. While cleaning the toilet, he had naughty thoughts about Madame President. He started chewing on the toilet brush. It felt magnificent. He knew that Madame President used this toilet and tried to restrain his urges. He reminded himself that he was a man, and a man shouldn't act weird or indulge in perverted behavior like that. But then, he hugged the toilet without hesitation, treating it like a pillow. I truly can't explain this. Madame President caught Kentaro and criticized him. Are you some kind of pervert? He apologized, explaining that he was so excited about his job that he had stayed up all night learning about computers. However, when he arrived at the company, he was assigned to clean the toilet. Definitely not what he had expected. Afterward, Madam President decided to test his skills. Unfortunately, Kintaro didn't know much about computers because he didn't have access to one yet. Frustrated, he began thinking and acting strangely. Everyone laughed at him for not knowing how to use a computer. He got embarrassed and began chasing after other staff members. Ultimately, Madam President fired him, saying, Our company doesn't need an overly enthusiastic man like you. Get out. She added, All men are just talk, with no abilities or sense of responsibility. But Kintaro, as determined as ever, refused to give up. He said, The sun may not rise today, but a huge sun might rise tomorrow. I don't need a salary or anything. Just give me a chance. Madame President, moved by his persistence, relented and told him, Do whatever you want, but don't distract others. Kintaro, once again excited, began engaging in small talk with the staff, learning various things. He even started drawing and writing detailed notes about every single staff member in the company. 
After a while, Kintaro was cleaning the window glass without any safety protection and performing other cleaning tasks. Day after day, he studied the details about the female staff members' knowledge and even their bodies, proving he was truly a GOAT student. Once the staff had left, Kintaro went into their office to check things out. Just as he was about to leave, he noticed some computers still on, so he turned them off to save electricity. However, he also spotted a computer case still running, but since it didn't have a power button to turn it off, he unplugged it directly, thinking it would further reduce the electricity bill. He expected to be praised by Madame President. When she returned and learned the truth, Madam President discovered that Kintaro had accidentally shut down the company's server, which contained critical data for the software she had been developing over the past three months. She was furious and punched Kintaro. Kintaro tried to reassure her, saying it was fine because he had written everything down in his notebook. She didn't believe him, and in her rage, tore the notebook to pieces, crushing his pride like a fragile vase shattering on the floor. Even after that, Kintaro had the audacity to argue about his notebook. To his horror, its torn pages revealed drawings of Madam President's body parts, making the situation extremely awkward. Despite everything, Kintaro refused to leave the company, saying that since he had caused such a big problem, he needed to fix it. Madame President told him not to worry about money, but Kintaro admitted that he had already spent all the one million yen he had received from her due to the accident. Her anger escalated, and she immediately kicked him out of the company. After a big mishap, Madam President called all her workers to put in overtime to meet the approaching deadline. You know, Japanese people work tirelessly at their nine-to-five jobs, often going relentless hours without sleep or breaks to meet deadlines. Some slept at their desks, while others kept working until their eyes turned purple with exhaustion. At one point, a worker suddenly shouted, calling everyone to check her computer. Apparently, Kintaro had brought back a backup hard drive earlier to restore the company's software and left without anyone noticing. Madame President, suspicious at first, checked the computer. Initially, she didn't believe it, thinking Kintaro had played a prank or used an old backup disk. But as she started using the application, she realized it was different from her original software, the one destroyed by Kintaro. It didn't take long for her to understand. Kintaro had written this application himself. Even more surprising, Kintaro made the software far better than the entire company had produced. It features animation and a user-friendly interface, making it easy for anyone to understand the concept. Shocked and feeling guilty for kicking him out, she couldn't believe he was capable of something like this. She rushed outside to find Kintaro, only to meet two elderly people arriving at the front gate. They asked to meet Kintaro, explaining that he had given them one million yen to help pay off their debt and had come to thank him with a gift. This revelation surprised Madame President even more. Realizing how kind and selfless Kintaro truly was, she started feeling deeply regretful about her earlier judgment. Without wasting another moment, she rushed to her car and sped off like a race car driver to find him. But unfortunately, she couldn't find him. The next part will show Kintaro teaching a student, which leads the parents to agree to hand their daughter to him. If you enjoyed my video, feel free to leave a comment, like, or even subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Part 2 will coming soon.